Yes! What up, suckers? So, question for everyone. Raise your hand if you know where I am right now. Raise your hand if you're one of the OG before 10,000 subscribers on my channel people because you know exactly where I am. Raise your hand if you are ready for this. It's the very curious news from around the tool shed with the amazing code Very curious news item number one. A player that could have played for the Dutch national team decided to play for the U.S. instead. Which is huge news given the current state of the U.S. men's national team at the moment. And by current state, I mean by losing to Canada for the first time in 34 years. Yes, that just happened and it's unacceptable. Just like not qualifying for the World Cup was unacceptable and I don't really want to get into it. So, let's take a look at this situation from a few different perspectives. First, the emotional perspective because yes, in Serginho Dest I trust. If he thinks we're good enough to dedicate his whole national team career to, then I can assume that means he's got a good relationship with the core players on the team. Pulisic, McKenney, Adams, Wea guys that you know were definitely urging him behind the scenes to stay and play with the U.S. and fight it out with them, and I love that. Also, I think it helped that he represented our country in the U-17 and U-20 World Cups, so it's not like he's brand new. It doesn't have a real attachment to our program and our players within the program, unlike, let's say, Julian Green. Do you remember him? Not many people do, who Jurgen Klinsmann successfully convinced to come join us even though he had only played for the German youth national teams. Second, let's talk about the pragmatic perspective too, because we've seen this dual national situation before, and the most notable one of the past few years has to be Jonathan Gonzalez, who did play in our youth national team system, but he elected to make the one-time switch and play for our rivals, Mexico. Yes, he did that. And how's that working out for him, you ask? Well, he made the switch in early 2018 because I think he thought it would help him make Mexico's 2018 World Cup team, and it didn't. He got left off the squad, and he's only played for Mexico three times and all as a substitute. So maybe Des got made aware of that situation by U.S. Soccer saying, you could go there, but there's no guarantee that you're going to play. However, if you stay here, you got a better chance of making that happen, and that's true. They're right. And then from a Dutch perspective, I'm sure they're thinking, why on earth would he pass up the opportunity to play for the Orange? The coach Ronald Koeman called him, and he said he wanted him. What else do you need to hear as a player? Also, we're better than the U.S. And to that I say, are you, are you sure better? You didn't qualify for the 2018 World Cup either, so pipe down. And then you would probably respond with, but it's so much harder to qualify in Europe than in Conca crap. And then I would be like, but what's the point of you having all of this ridiculous talent on your squad if you don't use it? All you had to do was draw with Bulgaria in Bulgaria and you would have qualified or at least gotten into the next round of like the playoffs to get into. It would have been a lot easier maybe and you couldn't do it just like we couldn't do it against Trinidad. And then he definitely would have responded with, well, we've been to the final three times at a World Cup. And then after a brief pause, because that was a good one, I definitely would have responded with, and yet we still have the same amount of World Cup trophies. Zero, bitch. And this could go on and on until the end of time when all I wanted to say from the very beginning was, welcome to the team, Serginho. We will always have your back and we're happy you're here. Very curious news item number two. Granit Xhaka gets subbed, walks off the field to booze, and starts taunting the home supporters. Which has to be surprising to no one because he's not good enough to be an Arsenal player. I've said it since day one, and manager Une Emery can give him the captain's armband to try and elevate his status within the team and with the supporters, but he's not at that level consistently. Now, in fairness to him, at times he does do some good stuff, and he's the emotional leader that the team needs, but let's be honest, he's not good enough. And that's okay, but the Gunners need to admit it and move on. Cut their losses and go get someone better. I heard Kim Shellstrom's available. Very curious news item number three. The more I watch Romelu Lukaku tear it up for Inter Milan, he's got seven goals and nine Serie A games this season, the more I think that Manchester United are idiots for letting him go. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say about that. Very curious news item number four. What are your thoughts on who is currently the best club in the world right now? I mean, Liverpool are undefeated in the Premier League and they've only lost once all season. That was 2-0 to Napoli in Italy in the Champions League group stages. But for me, it feels like Man City, based on current form, are playing better. However, I can't let their aesthetically pleasing style let me forget that they lost to Norwich. They gave up three goals to Norwich away from home and then they lost to Wolves 2-0 at home. They couldn't even score against Wolves. At the Etihad, even Leicester only lost two games all season. That was to Manchester United at Old Trafford and to Liverpool at Anfield. And both of those places aren't easy places 
to play. And they have a better goal differential than Liverpool. So they have to be in the conversation, right? But if not those teams, then who? Inter Milan, Barcelona, Juventus, Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, Marseille? Probably not. I don't think it's that clear cut is what I'm trying to say. So I want to hear from you in the comments about this after you hit like and subscribe. Also, I love you guys. I love the tool shed and I'll see you soon. Later.